Astrolips 2000 and today I want to bring you guys a video on some very basic uh, image processing in PixInsight. Uh, so quickly I want to show you guys how to stack all your uh, light frames and you know stretching into you know processing into a final image like you're seeing on the screen here. This is my uh, latest image of the Iris Nebula. Uh, I shot this with the ZWO 2600 uh, 20, uh, MC one shot color camera no filter. I'm in a portal five, so I find that shooting with no filter here, I get some better results on the colors. Um, so again, this is 15 hours combined of 120 second long, uh, two minute long exposures. So I'm gonna show you guys how to process an image uh, just like this. So um, let me just close this. A few of the, I should other mention also, I will use some uh, RC Astro scripts uh, you have pics insight and you you don't have them i strongly urge you to go check them out they're they work wonders they save a lot of time if you don't have those scripts that's fine you could just skip those steps uh, there are other ways to do some of those processes so let's uh let's just dive in here let me show you guys uh, what we got going on so you want to go script batch processing and then weighted batch pre-processing and this is what i use to stack it's very easy so if you are shooting with a astro camera like a ZWO um, that that shoots out uh, spits out a file out that's a fits has a fits header, it's going to know the weighted batch pre-processing will know if it's a light frame, dark frame bias. So if you did shoot with an astro camera, uh, what I do is I shoot all my files and load them into. Uh, one folder and you could take all your folder all those files in that one folder and dump them into weighted batch pre-processing by clicking files and it will organize all the files automatically into bias darks flats lights but if you shot with a DSLR it doesn't come out with the spit the file out with this fits header you will have to individually click on each one of these icons down here and tell it what are the flat frames dark frames light frames still it's not very hard um, Come over to the lights tab. You just want to make sure all these are checked. Auto crop, you don't have to check that one. I do because it's nice to get to one last step of cropping. And that's really it. You just have to specify your output directory or where you want the where you want it to save all the calibration frames and the final stacked light frame. And just before you're about to run this, you just click diag. Gnostics right here and it's going to tell you if you have any issues with memory or if your dark frames uh, That's one other thing I should mention that um, If you're going to stack in pics Pics and say you don't necessarily have to have your dark frames matching the exposure on your light frames um, Like for example with the iris nebula. I didn't have a set of 120 second long exposure dark frames I just use my 300 second long dark frames and Pix and Sight will automatically rescale your dark frames according to the length of exposure of your light frames. So that's definitely pretty sweet. Okay, so you just click OK, click run. It's that easy and you know goes fairly quickly. When you're done, what you're gonna get is wherever you specified the folder to be to spit your uh, images out to. I'll show you quickly. I can get into my Astro Drive here. Ready for processing. So you're going to look for this. This is what you're going to see. You're going to want your master. And then in here, your master light is going to be your stacked uh, light frame. I figured I'd mention that because when I started in Pix, I would go crazy trying to figure out which frame I should be using. And then you open the, that image, the stack light frame into Pix. Here's what you're going to get. If you did select the auto crop option, you'll get, you know, it's going to show you what it cropped out and we don't care about that. So let's just cut it out. Get rid of it. Um, on the side here, you'll see all the 
process command icons that I created. All of those are found right here under process, all processes. Right here is the toolbox of all the commands. So when I mention a command and you see me click it on the right hand side, they're all also found right up here. So here's our image. Let's do a screen stretch to see what we got. It should be very green. There we go. It's very typical because uh, one shot color shoots are GGB. There's two G's in there. Give you all that extra green goodness. All right, so let's get rid of that. To get rid of it, we use, um, you can go, you can use screen transfer function, click the link, and then we could see what's back there. Now, if you have a lot of nebulosity in your image, I would suggest that you use automatic background extractor. If you don't, you can use the regular dynamic background extraction for the purposes of this video. We're going to use automatic because there's a lot of dust back here. We don't want to pull any of that out. So we'll leave this open. We're going to come down. Typically, you would do division and then subtraction. Um, if you have some issues from your calibration frames, like the corners are real dark, then you could use division first to correct that and then subtraction to get rid of any gradients. I'm gonna probably crop it so I don't really care. We'll just do subtraction to get rid of that green or any of the gradients that are, that are in the image. So let's click uh, subtraction. First, we're gonna put the green back. Then we're gonna replace the target image and click go. I always like to see what it removes. So let's see what we got there. Make sure I did its job. Perfect. Got rid of all that green. And now let's restretch it. Even with now with the linked stretch, no green. So let's close this. Okay, so at this point, I typically like to do on a one shot uh, color image a color calibration. There's a few different ways to do it. I This is the one that I prefer to use. I already have an icon set up for uh, my camera. All the other settings I leave the way that they are. So you just have to look up what kind of sensor your camera has. I, again, I'm using the ZWO 2600 MC, which has the Sony IMX 571 sensor. And again, I didn't use any filter, but the camera does have the uh, I, uh, UV IR filter cut built in. So you just have to select this one down here. UV IR cut for the color. And then we're all set. I leave everything the way it is and drag and drop or click the little square. Okay. Get rid of this in the chart. And there we go. Wow, look at that blue. I just click this little back arrow, see what it did. Wow. Okay. So that's done. Now I'm going to use the Florex script for deconvolution. This is going to tighten up all the stars and all the give some good nice detail on the nebulosity. Clean up for all that atmospheric distortion that you get. There we go. Okay, so let's see what this zoom in. Oops. And the pan around you just hold the space bar and click the left mouse button and that will let you just pan around the image so we can see how good of a job uh, Blurax did. So let's click the back arrow and forward. Wow. Perfect. Okay. Next step. Noise X. Now, if you don't have this script, you can also use under the easy processing suite. The noise works very well, too. So, oh my god, look at my image. This just freaked me out. Uh, all you do is click this 24 right up here. There you go. Okay, so we get rid of that. Now, our next step is going to be to stretch the image. Now, you can use this, this one works very well. Soft stretch, I like this one. Shows you your image. Nah, but it's, you know. I know there's more there, how do we get it out? So 
So let's back up. Whoops, wrong image. Okay, click this one. We're gonna back up. I'm gonna show you guys how to stretch the image yourself because you're gonna get much better results this way. Stretch the image without a script or something. So select your image right here. Click this circle and you're gonna to wanna to grab the mid tones, the mid middle triangle right here and start sliding it to the left and you'll start to see the stars get brighter and eventually the image pop out. So let's drop it about this point right here. Click the square and keep going until you see the rise in the histogram. Let's go. There we go. So that's getting close. So now let's reset it and pull it in. There we go. Click apply, reset. Slide it over, oops. Click apply, reset. Now, if you click the left side here, this is the black point, we can darken the image. You don't wanna to go too much because you'll get rid of some of that dust. So just before the peak, say about right there. Apply. Reset. And just keep going back and forth. Slide this one over a little bit. Apply. Reset. Now let's slide the black point. Apply. Reset. Apply. Reset. And let's stop there because we can always go further with this later. And there we go. Much better results than the soft stretch. All right, so now the image is stretched. At this point, let's zoom in. There might be some noise in there. there definitely is some chromatic noise, but that's okay. We take care of that. You can hit it with Noise X again. You can hit it. That's okay. We're gonna do Noise X again, clean up some of this noise. Let's see how good of a job it did. Back up. Get closer. Forward. There we go. Perfect. Get rid of this. Let's hit it with some local histogram equalization, and this will really boost the contrast. You want to look at the kernel radius, contrast limit, and amount that I have set here. These is a presets that work for me very well. So I'm just gonna drag and drop these on and let's see what it does to the image. Should give it a nice boost. Usually I do this one or two times towards the end of processing. There we go. Let's see before and after. Before, after. Gives a really nice boost. Four. Okay. Get rid of this. Now I want to make sure that we don't have any green left over. So you want to use SC and R. All the settings I just leave the way they are. Drag and drop, and this will remove any green that's in the might be laying around. There we go. Nice. Definitely see a difference. Four. After. One last thing is we want to crop some of these images out. So let's go to dynamic crop. Move this out of the way and you can grab the edge and move it over to whatever framing that you're looking for. There are many ways to do it. You can grab at the corner here. So this isn't my framing, but just show you how to crop for the video. Yes. Click yes. Oh, it worked. Whew. Thought it crashed. Okay, cool. So that's, there you go, that's cropping. Almost there, guys. So one last step is when I first started processing and shooting, I remember I shot the Whirlpool Galaxy with the L Pro with a one shot color and when I was processing the image it was very gray, I had like no color so I thought something was wrong with my filter or the camera and it turns out it was something else, I'll show you. What you do 
to get some nice color, to boost the color, you click this right here, which extracts the luminance from the image. There we go. So this is going to be our mask. So you take the luminance. You got to move it over so you can see the side here. Drag and drop on the bottom so that you see the box with the open square, not the closed square. The closed square will match your views. You click the open square, it becomes a mask. Okay. So let's just get this out of the way. So when you see the red on here, that means you have a mask on the image. What you do is you right click and we click show mask to not show the mask. So the mask is there because you can see this is orange or it would look just like this gray if there was no mask on there. So why do we put the mask on there? We put the mask on there because what we want to do is boost some of the color, but not necessarily boost the color and saturation that's in the background. So what you do now is you click curves transformation. Okay, again, they're all up here, process, curves transformation. Whoops. And here's the little magic color giver called S, saturation. And what you do, click the circle, grab the saturation and pull it up, and that's what's gonna give it the image its color. So let's turn the saturation off. On, off, there it is on, off. C, component, this one will boost some of the contrast. And just click apply. And you can do this a few times. We're going to do it twice in this case. Ugh. No, we don't want to do that again. Right here. Yeah, maybe a little too much. Let's go back one time. Maybe make some final adjustments on the histogram here. Let's darken it a little bit in the background. There we go. Okay, and then my one last step I like to do is uh, see if it needs it. I'm sorry. Star reduction. And I use Blurex actually to star reduction. So what you do is uh, all the settings when I use Blurex, I, you know, I leave them the way they are, except for when I do star reduction. What we want to do is turn this down. To zero. And then I put this down to point 0.1. If you put this to zero, it's not going to make any adjustments to the nebulosity in the background. It's only going to adjust the stars. So let's just see how good this works. Sometimes it doesn't need the star reduction, but let's just try it and see if it works. Not works, but how it looks. Okay, so let's back up and then go forward. Oh yeah, definitely helps, especially with the little guys in the background. Back up and then forward. It's up to you. I mean, maybe you like to see more stars like that. If you don't, then you can run the Blur X as a nice, easy way to reduce the stars. And at this point, there are you know some other steps with sharpening and uh, extracting luminance and adding that back in. But this is just quick, basic processing to get you uh, started. And hopefully, I uh, will get some more videos out there to show you how to sharpen and add luminance and all that fun stuff. So I hope this video, you guys found this video helpful and again, the basic image processing and Pix Insight. And uh, I'll stay tuned for some more videos on image processing, okay? Appreciate it guys. Thanks for watching.